quarter of a million non Here is an announcement for teachers. The Science Workshop book, published by Longman at £2.25, is now available from the publisher and not from the BBC. Teachers may also like to know that the Cambridge University Press publish a series of booklets to accompany the radio series for 8 to 10 year olds, Maths with a Story. Hello, welcome to Science Workshop. We're starting off our programmes this year looking at bread. Now, looking at things carefully, observing accurately, is something that all scientists have to do. Lillian. That's right, David. Now, I didn't realise, but there are over a hundred different kinds of breads made in this country. Well, this, this is a Vienna loaf. It has a dark brown crust, and the inside is soft and it's called the crumb. Probably recognize this loaf. This is a sandwich loaf. It's got a softer crust and far more crumb than the Vienna loaf. I've got some unusual bread here. This is pita bread. The unusual thing about this is there's almost all crust, and very little crumb. And this is called a holler. And this shape makes it easy to break. You can see it's a sort of Platted dough. There's poppy seeds on the top, and it's got this lovely soft crumb. To show you how to start observing accurately, I went along to Marlborough First and Middle School in Harrow. Now, I want you to tell me as much as you can about the bread that you've got. Hmm? Right, you, Cheryl. Tell us about your bread. This is called French loaf, and it is very long. If you turn it over, it's got all round bumps, and it's a golden brown. It's quite soft. It's um, soft in the middle, and it's hard at the ends. Good. Karen, what about your loaf? Well, it's curved at the top and um, flat at the bottom. At the top, it's very shiny. It's called a wheat mill because it's got lots of wheat on it. It's very rough. Good. Anne Marie, tell us about your loaf. Well, it's called a tin loaf because it was baked in a tin. Oh. It's a sort of brownie gold colour. It's an oblong shape and it's softer inside than it is outside. Good. And Tracy, tell us what you know about your piece of bread. It's different from the other bread because it's flat. It's called pita bread. It's soft and it's curved in. If you turn it over, it's brown. If you turn it over again, it's white. And it got spots in the middle of it. Good. Now, where I come from, this is called a hedgehog. It's a granary loaf. There are seeds on top. And when I cut it open, there are seeds inside which make it tasty and crunchy to eat. Now, if you want to look closely at these seeds, you need to use a hand lens. You must learn to use it correctly. Now, don't stand over like this, because then you get in your own light. Put the lens to your eye, and then bring the object up to the lens until it's in focus. 
Ah, now it's sharp and clear. I can see the seeds. They're seeds of wheat. They're called grain. They're still rather small. So we've made a model. Each grain has a brown outer coat called the bran. And inside is a white food store. And here is the embryo. The embryo feeds off the white food store and grows into the new plant. And we use the white food store in our flour. All bread, whatever it looks like, or wherever it's made in the world, contains two basic ingredients, flour and water. And our studio guest this week, Paramjit Sal, is going to show us how to make bread using just these two ingredients. Hello, David. Hello, Pam. I'm going to show you how to make chapati. I've got 240 grams of whole wheat flour here and 180 mils of water. I'm going to gradually add water to the flour to make it into a soft dough. Well, it's all sticking together now, isn't That's it? That's right. One soft dough. And now, I'm going to knead it like this. And what does that do? Makes it more stretchy. Mm -hmm. And fold it. And then knead it again and fold it. What does the folding do? Oh, it gets the air in, makes the dough lighter. How long do you do that for? You do that for 15 minutes and we will leave it for half an hour to swell. I've got a dough here which has been left for half an hour. And is there a difference between these two? This one breaks off easily and there's no stretch. Mm -hmm. While as here, it stretches. Oh, yes. I'm going to make a chapati by using 30 grams of this dough, making it into a ball, dipping it into dry flour. What does the flour do? It stops it sticking to the board. I'm going to flatten the edges with my fingers. I'm going to dip it again so it doesn't stick to the board. And I'm going to roll it into a chapati. It's just like a flat pancake, isn't it? That's right. Now I'm going to put it onto a hot tawa. A hot what? A power? A tawa. T-A-W-A. Tawa. You can use a heavy frying pan if you don't have one. Mm -hmm. Can you see the bubbles appearing? I can see that one there, yes. yes All look. over the place now. Mm. That's right. Now so it's is getting the time. ready, is it? Yes. Now is the time to turn it over. And you do the other side the same, yeah? That's right. Now what we are waiting for is some brown spots to appear on the underneath surface. Let's have a peep. Yes, oh, yeah, that's see right. Now with a cloth, any clean dry cloth, we press the chapati onto the tawa in order to cook it. Oh, Can yeah, you see, see the bubbles now, how yeah. the air... In fact, they're all spreading out, making that's one big right. bubble, aren't they? Yes, that's all ready now. Oh, that smells delicious. Hmm? Really appetizing. Didn't take long to cook, did very, it? Very quick, yes. Oh. So what do we do with it now? Oh, hmm? I've made some lovely curry, some salad and some yogurt. So you can have a taste. Well, I'm going to try it then. Ah, oh, you can see the great big air bubble there, That's can't you? That's right. So, a spoon. What, what's this curry? That's a meat, lamb meatball curry. Mm -hmm. so I'll put that in there. That's right. Make sure it doesn't fall out. It's yogurt. And oh. uh, a bit of cucumber. Yes, let's see. Oh, I can't wait. Mmm. Mmm. Thank you very much, Pam. Beautiful. Well, that smells delicious. Hope they save some for me. Now, most breads we eat contain other things apart from just flour and water. Some fat. A little salt. Most important is this. This is yeast. And to see what effect yeast has, have a look at these two doughs. They both contain the same amount of flour and water, and they've both been standing for about half an hour. But this one contains yeast. Now, if I cut them... There we are. You 
can see that this one is very solid. This one is full of tiny little air bubbles. It takes about half an hour for these bubbles to form, so we've got a special film that shows you in just 30 seconds what takes place in that half hour. The yeast forms bubbles of gas inside the dough which get bigger and so cause it to rise. In fact, a loaf of bread is more air than it is dough. And now we've another film which shows you the loaf browning off and the crust forming. Just having a closer look at the crust and the crumb. Now the holes in the crumb are much bigger compared to the holes in the crust. There, they're very small. That's because in the baking, the holes in the crust dry out much more quickly. They don't have time to grow. Our different types of bread have different crusts and crumb. They're not necessarily made from different dough. Lillian's been finding out. The flour was pouring into the mixer as I joined Master Baker, Mr. David McNichol. Hello, Lillian. Oh, hello. Let's see you. I have put the flour in here already. Yes. So it's all ready to add the ingredients. We've got salt, fat, and uh, yeast food here. Then we've got to mix that in. And how much flour have you put in there? 16 kilo. I'm now about to put the yeast in, then it has got to be crumbled up. There, like that. And now we take the water. We have to make certain that the level is correct. How much water are you actually going to put in? Uh, nine and a quarter litres. Nine and a quarter? Uh, yes, yes, it has to be as accurate as that. Now that's all ready to start the machine. That's all you need to do? That's it. And now it's got to mix for three and a half minutes. After three minutes, the contents of the mixer have formed into a dough. Roger McNichol cuts and weighs the dough into loaf-sized pieces and Mr McNichol moulds them into round shapes. The dough is then covered with a cloth and left to rise for 30 minutes. The next stage is to knead the dough and form it into shapes to fit into the tins. Two tins are left open and two are closed with lids. And again, the dough is left to rise. While the dough is rising, Roger checks the oven is heated to the right temperature. After it's risen, Mr. McNichol splits the dough in the open tins. Then Roger puts the four loaves into the oven to be baked. Baking takes 30 minutes. After baking, the golden brown loaves are left to cool for two hours. Well, now the two hours are up, Mr. McNichol. Uh, the bread smells delicious and it looks lovely. What do you think of them? Well, they look very nice, Lillian. The uh, thing is, of course, that you can see the difference between the two types of loaf. We've got a very, very square tin here, being baked in a tin which is totally enclosed, so that it's compressed and it keeps its shape. This one has been baked in an open tin, which you can see I cut, and it is opened up into a very, very nice 
uh, open textured loaf. Now then, if we cut them, I hope you'll be able to see the difference between the two textures. See, see the difference? The crumb on this one is more open, and also this one is crustier than the sandwich tin. So I hope this gives you an idea of the two different types of bread from the same dough. Thank you very much, Mr McNichol. I look forward to tasting a few of those slices later, if I may. <laughs> You'll be more than welcome. Thank you. There's a lot you can do with bread, learning how to observe accurately, and all the information you need to help you is in the science workshop book. Don't forget to check your observations with each other and with your teacher and look for the differences. See how many you can find between the different breads. And now, the science workshop loaf. It's been specially made for us by master baker Joe Horsepool. That's really lovely, Malcolm. Well, it's obviously the work of a very skilled baker, isn't it, Malcolm? Think it'll catch on? Oh, you never know. Might rival sliced bread. Can't see it being used for sandwiches, though, can you? I don't know, David. S.W. Sand. Witch. Loaf. Say goodbye, Malcolm. Goodbye, Malcolm. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>